All right, what is up guys? Simon from BrainBiz.com. Been away for a while and I'm glad to be back and making more videos for you guys. Uh, so today what I'm gonna do, uh, it's gonna be a two-part video. Uh, I talked about uh, the Nexion LCD displays a while back and I actually found a project to do with them. Uh, so it's gonna be a two-part video. In this first part, we'll see the Nexion LCD display programming side of it. And in the next one, we'll see the Arduino uh, programming side of it. The Arduino side, you need to download libraries, make some tweaks uh, to actually make it work properly. So we'll see that uh, right after this one. So let me show you the parts that we're gonna use. So this is the uh, Nexion LCD display. This is a five inch display. And as you can see on the back, there's a lot of components here because these guys actually take care of all the graphic sides of things. So the Arduino doesn't need a ton of pins to actually control the graphic or send graphics to the display. Uh, so you design your own graphics here and then you can communicate between these two using a serial communication, which means you only need two pins, which is great because that leaves more pins available for your project. Uh, so like I said, today we're gonna see this guy out to uh, create graphics on it and send it to it because it has a micro US um, a micro SD card here to send the graphics and then we'll see the Arduino side of it. So the project I came up with is that me and my friend Cam we both have our retro arcade game cabinets uh, that uses the MAME emulator. Now the MAME emulator needs a, a physical keyboard to control everything that's on the screen. So for example if you want to pause the game you need to press P on a keyboard to actually do that. Now, instead of having a physical keyboard, I was thinking I'm gonna design some uh, graphics on the screen that will have buttons like that, like pause, resume, escape, menu. And then when you wanna pause a game, you just press pause button on the screen. That sends it to a Leonardo, which natively supports keyboard emulation. And then the Leonardo would send the P character to the computer to pause the game. So that way we don't have to reach for a physical computer all the time. Uh, so that's the project, that's the way we're gonna, we're gonna use this today. So let's go check out how to program the screen itself. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create graphics that we can uh, then use uh, to uh, put on the display. Uh, so right now I'm in Photoshop. As you can see here, I have a background. And the way we're gonna do this, it's gonna be full images. So basically on the next day on display, you can create pages. And uh, when we press a button, then it will go to a different page. So to create a graphic, I have my background here and I have layers. And if I turn on a couple of these layers here, we will create the first page. And there we go. I got one here that shouldn't be here. Let me see which one it is, this one. All right. So as you can see, this will be the main page when you start the display. So you have like buttons, so you have pause, load, escape, and all that. Now, once we get into the next on editor, we will assign some functions to each one of these uh, buttons. So for example, if I press uh, load in MAME, it will ask you where do you want to load from, so like a slot, uh, so from one to nine. So if I click load, then I will create a new page, so I will remove all these guys, keep my background, and go and enable these layers instead. This one here and the buttons that go underneath there. And I need one more right here. And there we go. So that would be when you press load, then you tell the next on display, okay, display this page now. And this is a back button and you have the uh, loading slots here. Now, if I click save, the only thing I need to change is the text. And there we go, that would be another page. And for example, let me just remove everything here. Like that. When you press pause, then the game will be paused. So I wanted to show that. Game pause, press to resume. So you would press in this area and it would go back to the main menu. Uh, so basically the way I'm doing this, I'm en enabling um, and disabling layers. And once I have the page I want, I go to file, save, and I save it as a JPEG. Now, I think in this project, I have four different pages and we'll see that right after in the next day on editor. So basically that's the way I do it. So enabling and disabling layers, then file save as a JPEG, and then we'll bring those in the next day on editor. So let's go check that out now. All right, so here we are on the Nexion Display Editor. This is a free software you can download on their website. I'll leave a link in the uh, YouTube description below so you can grab it. Um, okay, so when you start, you see I have a couple pages here already created. This is my save page, load page, 
Uh, this is the game pause resume page. Now what I'm moving here is a hotspot and this is what we're going to create to create touch uh, areas on the screen. Uh, so we're going to go to page zero. When you start a program, you'll have a page zero. And if you want to add more pages, you just click the little add button here. And uh, the first thing you'll need to do is import all your images, as you can see here. Now, to do that, you press plus or the add button here and just grab all your pictures. So we're on page zero. We're ready to go. So we need to put the uh, this picture here. So we're going to click on picture. It's going to put a little square here. Now, you don't touch it. Leave it where it is. And then you go to the right to pick, and you double-click in this area. And then you can choose the picture that you want. So we want this one. And there we go. Now we have our picture. Now, this is only a picture. There's no touch events here. So we need to add touch areas. Now, we're going to use this hotspot button here to add those. So click. It has it, M0. I'm going to move it around here, make it a little bit bigger. So the touch area is easier to uh, to get to. There we go. Now you won't see these squares. This is just like an area to represent the touch. So there we go. Now this says M0. And if you go to the right here, you'll see an ID to object name M0. And it's uh, technically, it's on page 0. Uh, these will be important when we get to the second part in program the Arduino. Uh, so that it knows what to do when it receives that ID, that object name, and on which page it is. So we'll see that in the next, um, next video. So now we need to copy and paste one, two, three, four, five more of these. So instead of creating each one and resizing, we could just go here, copy and paste, and then we have the same size. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do Control-C, Control-V on my keyboard, which is copy-paste. V, another one here, one more, and one more. So there we go. Now we have touch events, but these guys are, don't do anything yet because we haven't assigned anything to them. So let's take the first one here, M0, which is pause. Now, when I press on the screen this button, I want it to, first of all, alert the Arduino that pass this information here, M0 to in which page. So you do that by going down here, touch press event, or if you want to touch release event. So basically when you click the button, you want it to send it right away, or when you click and release the button, then you send it. I like to do press, so the first thing you do, you send component ID, you click that on, and that will send the information to the Arduino. Now, when I press the pause button, also I want it to change pages to display this page here, which is on page four. There you go. So I'm going back to page zero, click M0, and here in user code, you run, you're going to write page four. So that means when I press here, it's the display is going to display the page four now. So we'll see that. We can actually test that. So this is done. Page four, send component ID. This is the load. The load is send component ID again. You need to do that every time. And the page I want to go to is the load page, which is page two. So I'm going to go back to page zero. I'm going to type page two in here. And do the same for escape. I don't need to change page, so I just send a component ID. M3 is menu. I do need to change page for that. So I send component ID. And the menu page is page one, up and down here. So M3 and page one. And now this one here is save. I do say I do change page and it's page three. So I'm going to do M4, send component ID. You need to remember to uh, always click this or else the Arduino will not receive any, any information when you click. So save is page three. And this one, nothing is just reset. So I just need to send a component ID to the Arduino. So there you go. All our buttons are done. And it's ready to go. Now, I did the same thing here. I'm missing a couple here. So I could always add. But this is just sending um, the up arrow and down arrow uh, to uh, the Arduino. So we, I would need to do that as well. Uh, page two, you see this is one, two, three, four, five. So there's no changing pages. But send component ID needs to be there. So page zero. And now let's test it out. So we can do that by clicking debug here. So I'm going to click that. It's going to compile. And it, it, it shows you what you would see on the screen. So let's say I, I click on pause. You see it changed page to page 4. And if I click here, I, this was configured to go back to page 0. And there we go. We're back. And I click load. 
it's, it's showing that page. And this is going back to page zero here. And there we go, that seems to work fine. So once you're all done with that, then you could go and compile the code. So you click that, it's gonna show you that it compiled. And if you wanna have the file, you go to open build folder right here. And here's your file. So it's a TFT file, you can see the size. And that's the actual size that we're gonna put on a micro SD card and then insert the micro SD into the display and the display will update itself with that new code. So let's go do that now. Now also a uh, thing I forgot to mention, each uh, Nexion display, depending on the size, uh, will have a different resolution. Uh, the one we're using has a 800 by 480 uh, resolution. So in Photoshop, when I created the, uh, the image, I made sure that the image size in pixels was uh, 800 by 480. Uh, now you can see the list here, depending on the size that you're gonna use, the resolution is different. So that way, when I put my background, I, uh, it fills out the whole area here. So just make sure that you check that out before you start. Also, when you start a new project, since uh, my project was already open, you didn't see this part, uh, but when you start a new project, it uh, asks you to select the type of display you have. Uh, so basically, with the numbers here, you can tell which one you have. Mine is the NX80450 uh, here. And they also have an enhanced version that has more memory and uh, a little bit more processing uh, power. Uh, intelligent is in development, I don't know what that means. Uh, but basically, uh, for mine, it was basic, and then I chose this guy here, I did okay, and then, there you go, then you can start uh, creating your, uh, your page. All right, so the first thing we need to do is format the SD card, and uh, it needs to be in a FAT32 uh, format, as you see here. Uh, so just give it a label, quick format, but make sure you format it using FAT32. And once it's done, uh, basically, all you do is that you drag the file that we just created by compiling and you put it on the SD card. So now we're going to take the SD card and insert it into the display. All right, so now we have our SD card that we uh, put the file on and we have an XC on display. So let me just switch this guy over. I'm going to take the micro SD card, I'm going to put it in the display like this, and we're going to turn it over. And each one of them, they come with a little uh, adapter board, USB board, like this one. So you just need to make sure that you put the right uh, wires, like power and ground, on the right pins. Once it's inserted, I'm going to connect it to a USB power supply. And there you go. So let me zoom in on that. So it's saying updating. It's going to load the file. Copy SD, 13, 15%, it's going up. Gives you the actual size also of the file. So we're just gonna let it go through that. It's pretty fast. There we go, almost done. And after that, it's gonna verify the file. That goes a lot faster. And it says update complete. So now I'm just gonna unplug it. Let me just zoom out here. So I'm gonna unplug the display. Make sure I flip it over and remove the card or else it would just try to update again. So there we go, that's done. And now we should have our file on the display. And there you go. So let me just go here. So if I press pause, it says game pause. I can press anywhere here to go back. If I say load, it gives me the load menu. Go back here. And the touch response is pretty good on these. I mean, I'm not missing anything. I'm not pressing super hard. Uh, so they work very well, actually. So right now, there's nothing connected to the display, so it's just updating pages and stuff like that. But there are two wires here, transmit and receive, that we will connect to the uh, Leonardo in the next video. And when we press a button, it will receive uh, an event with uh, the number of the button that you page. You remember that uh, ID, object name, and all that stuff. And in here, I'll be able to send a keyboard code uh, depending on which button we're pressing. So there you go, that's the way it works. Hopefully uh, that helps and uh, let's go back and wrap things up. All right, so that'll do it for today, guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, don't forget to check out the next video coming up where we'll talk about the Arduino side of things. So downloading the library, uh, tweaking uh, some settings here and there, and then make it all work together. So hopefully you'll join us for that one as well. Uh, so that's it. So until next time, my name is Ivan and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.